does the Rune Knight rework is coming, all of the classes skills are coming. The the last current uh, KRO skill update. Unfortunately, there's no skill update for expanded classes. But oh well. All right. So starting with Rune Knight, uh, Dragon Breath and Dragon Breath Water. Base level modifier was changed from 150 to 100. That's a huge increase. Uh, I don't know if it. So maybe I could get uh, Excel out for a second. I'll get them load. Um, yeah, I'll just open this. It's fine. So to show the difference between the skill damage let's uh okay we have soul destroyer i'm not going to change any of this stuff if i go down here soul destroyer all right so soul destroyer had divided by 150 which is what dragon breath has right now if we look at our damage we have 399 3.99. And if we change that to 100, meaning at level 200, your your skill damage is doubled basically. We get to 5.99. So it's like a 50% increase. It, oh yeah, I guess it's 50%. It's it's a really big increase. It'll be very noticeable. Uh, Dragon training improves the. Uh, influence on the Dragon Breath skills from 90 to, or uh, the previous is 100 plus 1 minus skill level times 5. So like at the skill at level 1 it gives 0% uh, Dragon Breath damage. Uh, level 2 it gives 5%, 10, 15, 20 at uh, max. So this makes it so it's 10% per skill level now, but lowers the base mod. So uh, at Dragon Training level 1, you'll still have 100% uh, skill damage. But at level 5 Dragon Training, you'll end up with 140%. Uh, and this isn't like skill damage. This is like inside the formula. So it's more impactful. Skill damage multiplies this percent. So big dragon breath buffs. Uh, Sonic Wave improves damage formula. New damage formula is 1,050 plus 150 per skill level, which is also a huge increase. Because uh, the I think it's almost doubled. Should I do wait? Let's see if we can list of skills. So old Sonic Wave is. 1500% attack at level 10. 150 times 10. Plus 1050. There we go. So you get a thousand more base skill damage on Sonic Wave now, which is a pretty big increase considering it's also increased by base level so level 200 your skill your base skill damage is 5100 and then you apply like all your sonic wave modifiers so this skill damage gets increased by a lot as well uh, storm blast improves damage formula it's increased from 1500 percent to 2100 percent based on 120 strength so the that formula also is a Big increase. Uh, where's Storm Blast? Right here. So this is the formula for Storm Blast. So if we ignore Rune Mastery, which is a thousand percent flat max level, so we ignore that part. That's not what the update pertains to. So if we have one twenty strength divided by eight equals fifteen, and you times that by a hundred percent you get 1,500%, which is the old one. Now it goes to 2,100, which means 
I believe it's divided by so 120 strength divided by 5.75 or it's like 5.8 so your strength is more impactful and increases your damage even further on storm blast which is I believe storm blast is already this like skill that hits ridiculous millions um, wind cutter uh, increases cooldown from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 seconds and reduces delay after skill from 1 second to 0 0.5 uh, so you can only get 3 3.3 wind cutter per second now but you don't need very much after cast delay gear uh, you need 40% and you can max spam it uh, also reduce SP consumption which I think is also pretty nice. Um, so I guess technically it's like a wind cutter nerf, but it, it's a nerf end game, but early game, it's kind of a buff because you don't need as much after cast delay to fully spam it. Uh, ignition break, reduce area of effect from 11 by 11 to 9 by 9. And critical rate is instead of being half critical, it just equal to your crit, which is really strong now. Ignition Break is surged a lot in power level. I mean, you have less AoE, but I mean, I guess that is pretty impactful for some of the farming you do with it. But the fact you your gear will be less locked to stuff like I don't you don't need I don't think you need to force um like a Lux Sutan anymore. You can use like a full damage armor now. Uh, new damage formula is 450 times 5. At max level, you get 2,250%, which is an increase. Uh, Warlocks. Gravitational field. Reduce damage display to 2 times skill level hits and increases damage to 100 times skill level. So you do 500% magic attack per hit, and at max level, you hit 10 times. So max level you're basically hitting for 5000 magic attack percent uh, i i'm not 100% sure on the how the skill functions but i'm pretty sure that's a major buff cuz I, I don't think it's timed hits anymore it just hits that many times uh, mystical amplification this is a big change instead of being a one time buff for your next skill it's just a uh, a status increase so like instead of getting 100% on your next skill you get 50% magic attack for 60 seconds which that's that's really strong uh, it's better for spamming builds uh, though like I guess one shot builds which I don't know if you even exist they they lose power there but spamming like chain lightning crimson rock I don't think you spam Comet, really. Or well, I guess you do because the books. But uh, I think that's a good increase. Even though, like, it's less magic attack now. Better for spam. Soul Expansion. Massive increase in damage percent. Soul Expansion. So, at the moment, it goes up to 900% magic attack. Uh, and now it goes to... 1,000 plus 200 per skill level, which is... It goes from 900% to 2,000%. So I think it could be a actual viable skill. Obviously, it's, it's ghost property, so it's not going to be useful in all cases. But it, it's a lot more impactful. Uh, Comet. I believe the Comet change is not a major buff. So it goes from... 5,000 to 6,000 percent which is a buff but it's not as major as I think the other buffs are it was good for Comet uh, Tetra Vortex improved damage formula new formula is is 1500 percent wait what do you mean 1500 percent oh do you mean you mean uh um What's it called? 
soul expansion. All right, that might be outdated. So maybe it's a lesser increase. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure all the in-game. This page is like partly accurate, but some of it's not right because some of it got missed during uh, patches. Yeah, it's a little expansion. All right, so it gets buffed, but not as impactful as I thought it was. Uh, Tetra Vortex has better scaling now. Instead of being... Um, so like level 6 to 10, you gain a lot less damage for increase. Uh, but now you get 800 and 400 per skill level, which means you get 4,800 at max. So this gets increased at the top end. And it scales a little bit better throughout. Uh, and then freezing spell, you the mind slots are increased from four to eight, which I think is very like very good. Nice background noise. Uh, but max is seven spells memorized, so I think you need to rely less on like int. You, you get like tons of int anyways because it's your main damage stat. Uh, but like the, the base mind slots will be very helpful, especially for holding Comet and Tetra Vortex. All right, Rangers, focused arrow strike or, um, sharpshooting, uh, increased cast range from nine to 11 cells. That's kind of neat. Uh, new damage formula is 300 plus 300 per skill level, which I believe is a large increase. Because that means at max skill level, you get 1,800%. Uh, but it no longer deals damage in a line. It does damage in like an AoE effect wherever you hit. Which can be a nerf, but also a buff, depending on how good you were with lining up your skill. Uh, I think for uh, more experienced sharpshoot rangers, maybe it's a nerf. But for, like, newbies, it's definitely a buff. Because it's a lot easier just to point and click and hit the area. Instead of actually lining up monsters. But a uh, huge nerf to the skill is you now need the... You now have halved critical rate on the skill. Which, I'm not sure how the base critical rate will impact this. I don't know if it's added after or before i think it's probably before so it's also halved um but it's, this is definitely a huge hit to the build because now you need 200 plus critical rate to always crit uh aimed bolt it it's always does five hits now regardless of size and arrow consumption is always three uh and when you have fear breeze active it increases the skill damage. So the, the skill damage on Fear Breeze stays the same. Or Aimed Bolt stays the same. So you, this is still the base percent. But it, at uh, max level, if you have Fear Breeze active, plus 35... Okay, no, I, I need brackets on this. So 35 times 10 plus 800 equals uh, 1,150. So you get like 350% attack when you use Fear Breeze. Because Fear Breeze is being used more as a buff now for other skills. Uh, Arrow Storm adds fixed or increases the fixed casting by 0 0.3 seconds. Reduces variable casting to 2 seconds. Which I think is doesn't really matter because I think early game Aerostorm uses double metallic sound, um, not metallic sound, uh, sound amplifiers. So the variable cast time I think doesn't really matter much because they're going to reduce it fully, anyways. The fixed casting does mean you need to get dex boots or illusion boots now. Uh, unifies the cooldown to 3.2 seconds regardless of skill level, 
and increased SP consumption, reduced arrow from 10 to 5, but area of effect is reduced to 9 by 9. Uh, and the damage formula is increased, it's stronger now. You can compare that 180 times 10. I mean, I could just do that in my head, but whatever. Plus 200. So Arrow Storm now goes to 2000% attack instead of 1800. So you get like a small buff. But if you have Fear Breeze active, then you get to 2700%. Uh, and the way the AoE works is uh, it should be 5x5 five five for all of these now, 7x7, seven seven, and then 9x9 nine nine at max. So the whole AoE is reduced. And no limit, the duration is increased from 60 seconds to a minute and a half, or 2 minutes and a half, or 150 seconds, which I think is a, a big buff for unlimited. It makes it, I think, actually useful more often. And it removes the defense, magic defense penalty. All right, mechanic. There's a bunch of changes here. And I think uh, the mechanic skills actually get a lot better, at least from what I know of mechanic. So it reduces fixed casting from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1 at level five, which I think is a very minor change because 0 0.2 was reduced these same way 0.1 is reduced. Like, I don't think anything gives 0.1 reduction, really, that you would use early game or, like, to actually use the skill. So I think this change really doesn't do anything. Uh, variable cast time reduces from 2.2 to 2 seconds. Also, very minor change. Not going to be a very big difference. Uh, cooldown reduced from 0.65 to 0.3, which... I think there's a big change, which... Okay, so Arm Cannon's the skill that I always try to use, but it... It, it has such a high cooldown that I think it's not great. But 0 0.3, I think it's a usable skill now. Uh, the skill damage has also been massively increased uh, and doesn't change based on size anymore. And the base level mod has increased. So level 5 will do 1,900%. Uh, which is, if we look at arm can wait, is this arm cannon or Vulcan arm cannon? Their skills all sound the same to me. So we'll now do 1900% at max level and all the size stuff will just be removed. So it's a much cleaner skill now. Uh, and the cast range is nine cells on all skill levels. Area of effect is also slightly reduced. So max level is 5x5 five five now instead of 7x7. Seven seven. Uh, knuckle boost, reduce variable cast time from 1 second to 0 0.5 based on level 5. Uh, I feel variable cast time changes usually aren't that impactful. It's just using it early on when you don't have any reductions. Because an end game build will usually have a hundred percent or very close to a hundred percent uh variable reduction so the these are more just impacting the early game casting uh increase sp consumption from 15 to 25 uh, improves damage formula and increases the base level modifier a lot of mechanic skills were using the divide by 120 base level modifier so all, all those skills will see a decent increase in damage. Uh, where's... Where is this? Knuckle... Oh, what? Don't save it. What? Oh my god. Knuckle... Boost. There we go. So max level right now, it's 700%. Uh, after the change, it will be 1,100%. So you get 400% more damage as well as a higher base level modifier. Uh, Axe Tornado removes the damage bonus damage when equipping a wind property weapon and removes damage for the outer area of effects. So they, they made Axe Tornado actually usable AoE skill now. 
I mean, usually these AOE skills like this and Cart Tornado aren't great because they don't have like the best spam, but it's actually usable. Uh, also removes HP consumption, but increases more SP instead. Uh, damage formula also, I think it was massively increased. Uh, what is it? Axe Tornado. So it's 500% right now. Uh, and after the change, uh, I can't do one. Oh my God. Random buttons. Stop. 180 times five. So after the change, it's a 1,100%, which is over double. Uh, I think cart, cart Tornado was also doubled. It's like those skills are... I, I think they're just utility. Like if you get mobbed, you can use them to help clear stuff around you. But they're, they're, they're still, I'd say, not great as a main DPS skill. Just as like a farming skill. Uh, power Swing increases the base level modifier. Again, corrects the base level mod to be affected by the entire skill damage. And reduces the influence of strength and dex in the formula by half. And it removes Axe Boomerang Autocast. So it's just like a DPS skill. I think it's doesn't really change much from before. Uh, Vulcan Arm improves damage formula uh, and improves the base level modifier. Like all the skills got base level mods. Uh, unifies cooldown to 0.1 seconds regardless of skill level and gives 0.2 variable cast to all skill levels. Uh, improves SP consumption and increases area of effect. So Vulcan Arm, the dam their damage was doubled. Uh, before it was 720, 140, 210%. Now at max level, it's 420%. Uh, I don't even know if the skill is used. It, it, its base mod seems so low that I, I don't know if it's an actual good skill. Alright, on to Guillotine Cross. Soul Destroyer. Increases cooldown from 0.15 to 0.25. I thought it was 0 0.3 based on the uh, Divine Pride, but I guess it's 0 0.25. So you get four casts per second. Uh, it reduces delay after skill from 2.8, which pretty sure is actually two on Nova Oro, uh, to one second regardless of skill level and reduce cast range to four cells. The skill or the cast delay change you now need 75% to spam it 4 per second. Yeah, 4 range. It, yeah. Soul Destroyer was like... It was nerfed. This is a nerf. It's for sure. It gains 100% attack at max level. <laughs> I don't think Soul Destroyer is a dead skill. But I don't think... It'll compare as well anymore. Like... Before it was people like Eon and that were going to LOGH and doing 25 million, you know, soul breaker damage. I don't, I think they were doing full spam as well. So, like, insane damage. Now, the damage, you can still get high damage. Uh, and you actually need a little bit less cast delay. But you're, you're, you're capped for spamming. You don't get six and a bit per second, you get four. Uh, and you get like a little bit more damage, which I don't think is very impactful. Uh, rolling Cutter, increased spin counter duration from 5 to 10 seconds. This is a buff to Cross Ripper Slasher, not really Rolling Cutter. Uh, cross Ripper Slasher, reduce cooldown from 0 0.3 to 0 0.2, which means instead of 3.3 slashers per second, you can now do 5. And reduce cast delay from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. Which means you need about 33 to 34% cast delay reduction, and you can fully spam it. So it is more on par with rolling cutter uh, spam, at least on Nova Oro. Uh, cross impact, reduce cooldown by half. This is a huge buff for cross impact DPS. Uh, improves damage formula, you now get 2150%. 
at max level. So you get 400% more damage and double the spam. So cross impact is huge buffs. Uh, counter slash removes knockback inflicting effect. It should also... Actually, yeah, something's missing. It should... um. Oh, let me see my bookmarks. Uh, it should also have its base skill mod reduced. Uh, you don't really need ACD gear. Like, if you use Bolt Crusher, that's most of it. You need 30% cast delay. So you could Bolt Crusher Magic Mushroom to spam. Like you need 10% outside of Bolt Crusher, and you're, you're good. But I'm... The skill damage on Counter Slash... Oh, it wasn't changed here. Where was it? Maybe it was already changed? Hmm. Maybe it was reverted, I guess. Uh, Dark Claw increased duration from 10 seconds to 20 seconds. Uh, and reduced effectiveness on boss by half. So... On bosses, you get 75% increase now instead of 150%, and the duration lasts longer. So it, Dark Claw is meant for, more for um, like a long period of time in the fight instead of burst damage. Because you already do burst damage, but this is just like if you have to punch something 80 times. Oh, and uh, for Counter Slash, this makes it a viable build for farming normal monsters now. You do same damage on 20 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, over time, the increase technically is the same. Because you you just double the time that you deal the damage. Yeah, crit damage is being reduced. We'll, we'll get to that. See, we already did the crit classes, so I'll go over that now. Uh, critical damage for skills is reduced by half. So, um, Temporal Boots, for instance, Temporal Boots of Luck, gives 30% critical damage. But if you use it on Cross Impact, Soul Destroyer, Sharpshooting, Ignition Break, Sonic Wave, instead, it'll give you 15% critical damage. It is like a nerf, and that's why a lot of the main DPS skills, their uh, base mods were increased, is to counteract that nerf. Uh, though, I do want to point out that like this doesn't make critical damage bad. Like, critical damage is still really strong, and you still want to get critical damage. It's just there's going to be more instances where you might want attack percent or race percent or whatever instead of critical damage. So, like, crit damage is still good. Temporal Boots of Luck, still, like, best in slot crit boots. Uh, but, like, other things like your enchantment on your Temporal Mantu, attack percent might be better now instead of crit damage. All right. Uh, moving on to Archbishop. Judex got its base level or base modifier increased. Yeah, so we lose more damage. What? All right, so I the calculations I did on cross impact, uh, we lose damage per hit, but we in we get more damage per second now. Our DPS increases. So it's actually like long term fights. It's better. But for one charting mobs, it's obviously worse. Uh, Orc Bishop, uh, Judex improves damage formula, which I believe is a decent increase. So it's 500%. This might be wrong. I think it's like 700% or something right now. I'm not sure. Or no, it isn't. This, this is correct. Uh, but now it's 70 times 5 plus 300. So instead of 500, I think it's it's 650% now. Uh, Adoramus uh, increased the skill, the magic percent skill damage 
which I think is it's a lot better of a skill now and actually can be its dedicated own build. Uh, especially because if you use Ancilla, then your skill damage changes to neutral magic damage instead of holy. So it allows you to actually deal with holy monsters and such. So I think uh, DPS Archbishop or Exorcism, Exorcism Archbishop, whatever you want to call it, can be a, a proper thing now. Uh, Royal Guard. They're, they have a lot of changes. Uh, the second most changed class. Reflect damage is being completely changed. Actually, a lot of these skills are changed completely. Uh, so now instead, it's reflect damage reduction. It changes the skill effect from reflect damage taken to reduce damage taken from reflect melee skills by 10% per skill level. So max skill level, you reduce reflect damage you take by 50%, which I think is a, a decent amount. It's an actual notable amount compared to the terrible 30% that like rune knights and GXs get, which really doesn't help them at all because they still die in one shot. Uh, shield spell completely reworked again. Uh, instead of having multiple effects, it's one effect per skill level. It no longer cares about your defense magic defense or refine rate i think it is uh so level one restore it three percent hp every three seconds for 90 seconds level two same thing but with sp level three plus 150 attack and plus 150 magic attack which i prefer this it's less confusing easier simpler to use uh i, th I think it's just a, a nicer skill overall to look at opposed to, like, a list of 80 effects. Uh, the Royal Guard Shield that gives Shield Spell... I think it gives a level 2. Or it might be... It might give a level 3 ability. Ah, here we go. Um, it lets you Shield Spell level 1, which is... So that means it lets you recover 3% HP every 3 seconds. Which... I mean, it's pretty good. It, any class can equip a shield. So you can put the shield on, activate the ability. I think it stays um, after you unequip the shield too. So you can equip it, get the buff, and then just recover HP as you go. I think that shield's really good now. As long as the buff stays after you unequip the shield. Which I, th I think it still does, but... It might not. All right, uh, banding changes the skill effect again. Just reworking the entire Royal Guard skills kit uh, can only be used when in a party. Increases your defense based on the number of party members around you, which is fifteen plus at max skill level, fifteen plus fifteen per party member. So you can get. 150 plus uh, oh my God. Uh, 180 defense in a full party which I mean it's defense so it's not it's still good to have but it's, it's not like a major thing definitely a, a very big rework of the skill uh, Hesperus Lit removes the cast condition of needing a bunch of royal guards alright uh, changes the damage formula so it's massively increased when under inspiration status increases even more basically they just changed it to be a damage skill you just hit things with it now um earth drive removed the defense reduction and attack speed reduction and the shield destruction chance they removed all the utility off the skill uh, and they also removed the shield weight and shield refine rate. So now it's based on your strength and uh, vit. Are these custom changes? No, these are official changes. Monster Hunter is the custom stuff. That's Monster Hunter things. These are all official changes. 
Uh, it's all on this page here as well. This is the Divine Pride post. Uh, so 380% per skill level. Increases the damage by quite a bit. And it's no longer forced earth property. So you now have like a small AoE skill to farm monsters, I guess. Uh, Banishing Point increases the damage formula, which I think it's like doubled now. It was a lot lower before. Uh, Cannon Spear. This one has big changes as well. So it changes from dealing to all enemies in like a big uh, 3 by 11 line. Instead, uh, it deals damage to all nearby enemies around the target. It's just an AoE attack. Increase SP consumption and reduce this cast range to 7 cells. But it has a chance to do critical hits equal to half your critical rate. And Spear Clicking, I think, gives... Wait, does it give hit? Spear Quicken. Alright, so Spear Quicken as a buff gives you 30 critical rate, which is a pretty good start for making a crit royal guard. And you can just, you know, cannon spear. That has pretty low base attack, though. So I, I don't know how effective it'll be compared to the other builds. Moon Slasher removes the uh, utility effect of immobilize making people sit. Instead, if you deal damage around you and then increase over brand skill damage for two times skill level seconds, 10 seconds max. Over brand changes the skill logic. So instead of being cast on the ground, I believe, yeah, uh, you cast it on a target and it no longer knocks them back and doesn't do a three part hit. You just hit them once. Uh, so it's just like a DPS skill now. Uh, improves damage formula. So I, I think it's level 5 it gets to max. So you get 1,500% attack max. It's pretty good. Uh, and Moon Slasher increases it to 450% per skill level. Which is 2,250. So this is just changed into a pure DPS skill now. Uh, Genesis Ray removes HP consumption. In other words, you can actually cast the skill without killing yourself now. Increased SP consumption by a lot. Uh, changes the skill logic and it'll be cast immediately, no longer cast on the ground. So it hits an AoE around you, uh, which I think it already did. Improves damage formula to 2000 or 230% uh, magic attack per skill level and increases based on your int. It also still, I believe, increases based on your base level. That's like an already existing modifier. They just added it. Uh, so max level, you get 2,300%. Or if you have Inspiration active, it does 3,000% magic attack and deals neutral damage. Finally, Inspiration increases the duration by a ton. I think it was 60 seconds before. Now it's 30 plus 30 per skill level. So three times uh, 180 seconds or three minutes. Uh, removes XP cost and no longer dispels your buffs. And it removes self damage on each attack. So you no longer reflect to yourself. And it can be used with banding and prestige. Even though banding and prestige can't be used with each other still. Change the skill formula so now you get a lot more hit a lot more status i think more hp and the attack values stay the same uh, and it drains a proper amount of percent hp now the royal guards kit has changed a lot and i'm not a royal guard player so m maybe it's uh you know, not the best source, but from my perspective, Royal Guard seems better off now overall. At least in PVM. PvP, I think they lose a few tools, like Moon Slasher, for instance. Uh, sorcerer changes. Psychic Wave. When equipping a staff or book, 
each hit will deal damage twice. Uh, this is basically, they wanted to buff Psychic Wave without giving Shadow Chaser a buff. So if you, basically your damage just hits double uh, if you use Stafford Book. Uh, Diamond Dust improves the formula and adjusts influence on Int and Dao Tsunami skill level. Vader Spear and Earth Grave, exact same thing as Diamond Dust. The formulas are improved. There's nothing stated like specifically what uh, the numbers are, but they're improved, meaning it's some kind of increase. Spellfist has a large change. So instead of being a limited amount of attacks, you now instead consume 20 SP each attack and ends if you and ends if you run out of SP or if the duration ends. And it deals magic damage. So it's literally like the old critical builds now where you activate your spell fist and then you just click on a monster and you you punch it to death. Uh, you don't have to reset it all the time now. I think more convenient and it lasts longer as well. But they reduce the base damage bonus from 500 to 200%. So you lose damage, but you gain duration. And I, I think it's less annoying to recast it and set that up. Uh, so like mechanical playability improved, but damage wise decrease. Uh, Killing Cloud removes the red gemstone consumption. Which is nice. And skill duration is always 5 now, which is a decrease. And the damage formula, I, I believe, is just the same as before. Uh, it replaces the poison inflicting effect with cloud poison. Anyone inflicted with the cloud poison status is inflicted for 5 seconds and will take increased damage by poison property. Uh, attacks. Um, so poison property attacks will deal five plus or five times skill level percent. So twenty five percent at max level. Poison burst is also reworked. Uh, it now deals a thousand plus three hundred percent magic attack to the target and nearby enemies. And if you have or if they're reflected. By Cloud Poison, it'll deal 1,000 plus 500 times skill level on top of the bonus poison damage. Which is, if you can give them poison status, or the Cloud Poison status, and then hit them with this, you, you can do a ton of damage, I think. Yeah, I think the skill is viable now. I mean, I don't think it's the best, but it's viable. Uh, it also improves the, or increased based on int, and the base level modifier was increased from 120 to 100. And finally, striking. It can be used on party member. I don't understand what this means. Striking is already used on party members. Nothing changes. It seems random. It seems random on here as well. Like it's just... I, I don't understand. Unless it wasn't supposed to be before. But that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, changes the bonus attack to 20 times skill level instead. So you get 100 attack max now. No more 4 times 18 plus some big base. Uh, it, this this is reduced and removes the bonus from the endowment skills. So it's just a flat 100 at max level. Removes critical chance bonus and adds a new effect with perfect hit. Which I think is a great change. But it depends if this is dispellable or not. Uh, and increases duration from 60 to 90 seconds. Try. Uh, metallic sound, double skill damage. Oh, this is a uh, Minstrel Wanderer. Uh, severe Rainstorm. Uh, when, so it's 100% attack when equipping a bow. 120% per level when equipping an instrument or whip. And they'll deal damage 12 times. I'm unsure if the duration stays the same. Uh, like, is it, like, before it was like 3 seconds and dealt damage every 0 0.3. So it's 
So I don't know if it has the same duration, same 0 0.3, like e damage every 0 0.3 seconds, or like how that mechanically works out. Uh, and reduce arrow consumption from 20 to 10. Uh, reverberation reduces arrow consumption from 10 to 5, reduces area of effect from 7x7 7 7 to 5x5 5 5 regardless of skill level. Also increase SP consumption, which I think is painful because it already costs a lot of SP, especially to spam. Uh, so they get less AoE, but also cost less arrows. Not, not that much big changes there. Uh, Shadow Chaser. Shadow Spell now gives 5 magic attack per skill level. Uh, for the duration of the skill, so it has to be active. Triangle Shot has a bunch of changes. So it has a new damage formula. 230 times skill level percent. Uh, improves the base level mod. So Triangle Shot will do a lot more damage. And before, it used to have Agi in its formula to increase your skill's damage. Um, and people were talking if it's still there or not. And I believe it is still in the skill. It's still affected by Agility. But my only source for this is... If we go on Divine Pride and look at the KRO skill descriptions... Uh, okay, bye bye, add. Thank you. Uh, base level and Agi still are in the description. So I, I'm pretty sure it's still affected by agility. Uh, this is the only evidence I have. So maybe, maybe it's not and it's just left in there by accident or something. But from what I can tell, agility should still affect it based on that. Because I looked at all the other skill descriptions, and everything else is all accurate. So I, I, I'll just assume Triangle Shot is accurate for now. Uh, the only thing that wasn't accurate was the Karo skill description doesn't have doubled skill damage on Metallic Sound. Which I, I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, they removed the knockback inflicting effect. And removes variable cast time, but adds 0.2 seconds cooldown. I think that's very helpful for this build. Uh, Fatal Menace improves damage formula and is now affected by Agi. Uh, so, some medium sized changes there. Uh, and Sura, before we. So, this one also has a lot of changes before we go and look at genetics biography. Uh, Rising Dragon increased duration by a ton. Uh, what's the max duration before? So max duration was 165 seconds before. And now it's uh, 20 times skill level is 300 seconds. So it's almost doubled. But at like level 1, it's way higher. It's like 5 times higher than before. Uh, changes HP and SP bonuses to skill level percent. So instead of 13% or 12%, it's just 10%. So it just goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, and removes HP draining over the duration and recovery penalty. I didn't even know those existed on the skill. Never seen them anywhere, ever. Uh, sky, sky Blow or Sky Net Blow. Uh, it improves the damage formula. It's increased by a lot, but I believe it no longer is increased. Um, or its damage isn't increased from the combo effect, which it used to have. Uh, sky. Oh my god, buttons. Sky net blow. So I believe the combo effect is removed. Because uh, it's also removed from like the whole flash combo. But it gets, instead of 80, 200% at level 1. And instead of 400, you get 1,000% at level 5. So a lot better AoE skill. Dragon combo. Increased cast range to 2 cells. 
It's an interesting change also on Fallen Empire. Uh, improves damage formula. You deal a bit more damage with it now. And that's about it. Uh, Fallen Empire removes the immobilize inflicting effect and removes the bonus damage from the weight limit on the enemy or its size for the monster. Improves damage formula by quite a bit. At level 5, you do 1,600%. Uh, and Fallen Empire now. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a level 10 skill. That means you do 3,100% attack. So you get 500% more attack, but no longer immobilize enemies. Uh, immobilize was removed. Uh, Tiger Cannon uh, is changed, so it no longer requires a target. Instead, it's an AoE skill just around you. Weapon property applies to all every damage that hit the enemies. Uh, at the moment, it does some weird pseudo-neutral property thing. I don't know. Basically, your weapon property is all the damage now. It's not converted and weird stuff. Uh, area of effect is 5x5 five five and then 7x7 seven seven at the higher levels. Reduced cooldown from 5 to 3 seconds. Uh, I don't know much about Sura's cooldown effects on weapons and stuff. Uh, so I don't know how low you can get this now. But reducing it from the, the base cooldown is pretty good. It becomes more usable. Uh, flash combo that removes Skynet blow from the skills and removes the inaction time, which I believe is the time. It's either the time it takes like the animation to do the skill, the animation between the skills or the animation after the skill. It's one of those three things, maybe all of them, maybe multiple of them. It's some time related thing. Basically, you cast it faster. Uh, reduces cooldown from 5 to 3 seconds. Rampage Blaster. Reduced sphere, reduced sphere consumption from 5 to 3. Lightning Ride or Ride in Lightning on Nova Row. Uh, reduced sphere consumption from skill level to 2. There's 2 on all levels. But the number of hits equals the skill level. So skill level 5 still hits 5 times. It only consumes 2 spheres. Oh, what the heck? Whoops. So hard to scroll. My hand is frozen. Um, reduces variable casting from 1 to 0 0.5 seconds. Damage formula is 40%. Uh, that stays the same. But... When equipping a knuckle, you get extra damage. Oh, there's a slight delay before casting Skynet Blow, so it took too long. I see. All right, so that's what it means. So it removes that delay because the skill is also removed. Makes sense. Uh, Lion's Howl uh, reduces SP consumption to 70 and reduces fear consumption from 5 to 3. Uh, reduces the area of effect, so it's 9x9 nine nine at max level. And removes the fear-inflicting effect. Improves damage formula. The new formula is 500 times skill level percent. And massively increases the base level modifier. Uh, so, it goes to level 5, so you get 2,500% attack. Which I, I think is pretty strong now. And finally... Genetic. First, prepare potion. Homunculus supplement, homunculus supplement can be crafted with this skill. Uh, prepare potion is pharmacy. Uh, so it's just like the normal crafting skill. Requires a potion creation guide, and you have to learn bioethics in order to craft it. Basically, you use it and you increase your homunculus's intimacy. So you don't need to wait 4,000 hours, or actually 15-ish hours, to get a loyal homunculus. 
And it needs a Seed of Life, Yellow Herb, and Empty Bottle. Uh, Aid Potion, or Potion Pitcher, increases the effectiveness on Homunculus by times 3. Uh, Cart Tornado improves damage formula, so instead of doing 1000% at max level, it does 2000%. It's better, I think it's still a meme. The skill modifiers on it are better though. Uh, Cart Cannon uh, improves damage formula. The only actual improvement here is Int is times 2 more effective. Uh, basically, they just rewrote the formula. You still have the same base attack, basically. Uh, instead of just being 1750%, uh, it's 1250% plus 20 times skill level times re cart remodel skill level. So you still get 1750% in the end when you max your skill levels. Uh, and this int is more effective now as well. Uh, Blood Sucker reworks get it here, reworks skill. Um, so instead of being whatever fixed weird damage it was before, uh, it now gives you a buff. So you gain uh, S or HP leeching to a party member. And I think at max level, it's 9% chance to restore 5% HP. So you just, it's just good. And the last four, uh, what's level five, 300, 280 seconds, almost five minutes. So you can like slap it on your rolling cutter GX and then go farm somewhere with big HP buff or use it for cart tornado or something. Uh, Spore Explosion uh, removes the primary damage. Instead, it only does the splash damage. And it improves the uh, percent by quite a bit. So it does 2,400% at max. Uh, and adds a debuff to anyone hit. So they take 10% more damage from ranged attacks. For 5 seconds. Uh, or 5% on bosses. Now, homunculus changes, which this is where all the changes really happen. Homunculus HP and SP gained from base levels, from leveling up, uh, and evolution and mutation have increased. This will only affect new homunculus, so your existing one will not get this HP bonus. If you want your homunculus to have more HP, you'll have to remake it, unfortunately. Uh, though, we do have some supp supplements now, so you it won't take as long. Uh, you still have to level it and stuff, though. So, uh, Call Homunculus now consumes one seed of life to summon a vaporized homunculus or resting homunculus. Uh, it lasts for 1,800 seconds, or I believe it's 30 minutes. Uh, and it will perform AI normally. You no longer need to manually click and all that to get it to attack. So there'll be a, a built-in AI. It'll, it'll do all the stuff on its own. So I guess you don't have to mess with Azzy AI anymore. Um, Vaporize adds a 20 second cooldown. Homunculus Resurrection adds a 20 second cooldown. Sarah, Needle of Paralyze, improves damage formula. Uh, so the thing with all these, I don't know the old versions really well, at least the damage wise. So I don't know how big of an increase this actually is. I don't know what the old version was because uh, our skill list here is incorrect. And I know for sure it's incorrect because I'm the one who wrote them. So, like, I think some of the base homunculus have okay things. But, like, if we look at certain skills here, like, they're just not correct at all. With a needle to paralyze. Oh, my hand's frozen. Yeah, 450% per skill level. This one's, like... 
which will be a decrease, but I think this was wrong to begin with, so uh, it's definitely not improved if that is true. Uh, poison Mist replaces Blind Inflicting Effect with Mist Poison Effect. Mist Poison will reduce the target's flee to zero. Uh, improves the damage formula to 200% time skill level. Uh, damage interval is unified to one second regardless of skill level. Increases additional damage based on Homunculus's dex. Changes duration to three times skill level seconds. And when, when you recast the skill, the old one is removed and new one will be replaced. The old one is removed and the new one is placed wherever you cast it. Painkiller. Increases the duration to 300 plus 30 times skill level. Removes attack speed penalty, which I think is huge. And can only be cast on your owner. So you can't cast it on other people anymore. Only yourself. Dieter. Lava Slide. Reduces area of effect to 7x7 seven seven cells. Removes attack count limit. Removes burning inflicting effect. Improves damage formula to 50 times skill level percent. Damage interval is reduced to 1 second. Uh, changes duration to 5 plus skill level seconds. When recast, the old one is removed and new one is placed on the new target area. Pyroclastic. Oh my god, I did it again. Why does it keep doing this? Pyroclastic increases bonus attack damage depending on skill level by 100 based on level 10. So it's base level plus 100 at level 10. So you get 300 weapon attack at max level, which I think it's at 250 right now or something. So you get more attack now. Weapon attack. Uh, increases duration from 300 to 30 times skill level. Removes fire property endowment fully. And removes hammerfall autocast. Eleanor. Midnight frenzy. Improves damage formula. Adds defense ignoring effect. That's it. Eleanor doesn't have many changes. Uh, Ira. Eraser cutter. In, or improves damage formula. It's now 450 times skill level percent. Increases the influence of int in the skill damage formula. And reduces casting time to 1.5 seconds. Xeno Slasher also reduces casting time to 1.5 seconds. And the last one. By Bayeri. 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 The, the horse. Uh, stall horn removes knockback inflicting effect, improves damage formula to 1500 plus 300% time skill level, improves the influence of vit in the skill damage formula. Stein wand adds a cooldown of 20 seconds based on level 5. Additional effect cast rock wall on self and the owner. Last for 100 times skill level seconds. Rock wall increases your defense by 100 times skill level and magic attacks or magic defense by 30 times skill level, which is like it goes to level 5. So you basically, Barry now gives you free shining magic defense scrolls. Easy. Uh, Hylage. High Lidge Stange. I th it has a different name on our server. Uh, it has like High Lidge something. Uh, I think uh, this is weird. Uh, reduces casting time to 1.5 seconds and improves damage formula to 1500 plus 250 times skill level. So that's that's it. That's all of the base game skill changes, all official. I think overall, these improve a lot of builds for a lot of classes.